Let's see how to find the equation of a circle given the coordinates of its center as well as a point through which it passes. And for that we're going to be working through the exercise we see here in which we're told find the equation of the circle with center at the point with coordinates 3, 4, given that the point with coordinates 6 and 9 is a point along its circumference. Okay, well to do that let me start by moving this question upwards here. There we go. And now we can get started. To solve this problem, we're going to be using the standard form of a circle's equation. And if you're not sure of what that is, let me remind you of that in the upper right hand corner here. Given a circle, so I'll draw something looking like this, whose center has coordinates h and k, and whose radius is r, and of course the h and the k here are the x and y coordinates of the circle's center, so I could draw a set of x and y axes like this. I could say that's x, and that would therefore be y. In standard form, this circle's equation would be in parentheses x minus h squared plus in parentheses y minus k squared. And that will equal to the radius r squared. And I'll go ahead and box that equation. There we go. That's the standard equation or standard form of a circle's equation. And so I'll just write standard equation. Okay. Now looking back at the information we're given in this exercise, we see right away that we have the x and y coordinates of this circle's center. Indeed, those are 3 and 4. And so referring back to this standard equation here, since h here is the x-coordinate of the center and k is the y-coordinate of the center, we can already make a note here and say that h equals to 3 and k equals to 4. And so we can see right away that the entire left-hand side of this equation is well defined, since all we really need are the values of h and k. What we are missing on the other hand is the value of r, the circle's radius. To find it though, we'll use the fact that we know the center and that we're given a point along the circle's circumference. And here's how to do that. And in fact I'll write that that's the first thing we'll do, so I'll put a little one like this, step one. And I'll say find radius, find radius, which is lowercase r. And in fact, more importantly than finding the radius r, we need the square of the radius r squared. So I'll put a little comma here, r squared. Okay, now let me draw a very generic circle with center at 3, 4, which passes through a point with coordinate 6, 9. So I'll say that my circle looks something like this. There we go. Its center is right here with coordinates 3, 4, and it passes through a point along its circumference right here, which has coordinates 6, 9. There we go. Now looking at this circle, and keeping in mind that we need to find its radius, we can see right away that the radius is equal to the distance from the center to the point along the circumference. In other words, that orange segment there has a length equal to r. And so to find the value of r, what we really need to calculate is the length of the line segment with endpoints 3, 4, and 6, 9. And there is a formula for that. In fact, you can see that formula on the screen right now. But what I often prefer to do to find the length of a line segment is to visualize the right angle triangle, which is such that the line segment is its hypotenuse. So that would be this right angle triangle that I'm drawing right now, and the right angle would be right here. And we can clearly see that the radius here is this right angle triangle's hypotenuse. And now that I have this right angle triangle, to find the length of the radius, and therefore this triangle's hypotenuse, I just need the length of the other two sides. And luckily for us, that's quite easy. The horizontal length we have at the bottom of the triangle here is equal to the difference between 3 and 6. And in fact, I'll write that underneath here. This side length here is equal to... 6 minus 3. Indeed, we have 6 minus 3 here, which of course is just equal to 3. And the other side length here, this vertical side length, well, that will be equal to the difference between 4 and 9. And in fact, I'll label that as well. This side length will be equal to 9 minus 4. There we go. And 9 minus 4, of course, is equal to 5. Okay, so to find the radius r, what we're actually dealing with here is a right angle triangle the right angle right there, and the radius is the hypotenuse right here, and I'll label that lowercase r, and we have side lengths 
3 and 5. And now using Pythagoras' theorem, we can quickly state that r squared, that's the square of the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that's r squared equals to 3 squared plus 5 squared. Carrying on with that calculation, we have 3 squared, which is 9, and 5 squared, which is 25. And since 9 plus 25 is 34, we can state that r squared is equal to 34. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. Notice that if ever we were asked, we could also state this circle's radius. Indeed, we could state that r is equal to the square root of 34. And you can go ahead and check. But with my calculator and rounding that to three significant figures, I find that that's approximately equal to 5.83. Okay, that's step one done. We've now found this circle's radius, and more importantly, we found the value of the radius squared, r squared. And all we have to do now is use the coordinates of this circle's center, 3, 4, as well as the value of r squared we just found, and the standard equation of a circle. And so I'll just say use standard equation. Okay, so copying the standard equation, that's in parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus in parentheses y minus k close parentheses squared is equal to the radius r squared. Next, we keep in mind that h here is the x coordinate of the circle's center. So looking back at the question we have here and the notes that we made at the top here, h is equal to 3. So I can already write that underneath the h, that's 3. And the k that we have here is the y-coordinate of the circle center, which, remember, is the 4 that we have here, and we made a note of at the top. So k is equal to 4. Last but not least, the value of r squared is what we found in step 1, and that was 34. So we'll be replacing r squared by 34. And doing all of that leads to the answer x minus 3 in parentheses squared plus, in parentheses, y minus 4 squared, which equals the 34. And we're done. We've just found this circle's equation in standard form. Now, at times, we may also be asked to find the general form of the circle's equation. And so I'll write a little 3 here on the right-hand side, and I'll even add, in parentheses, at times. We may be asked for the general form of the circle's equation. Now to get the general form of this circle's equation, we start from the standard equation we just found. So let me quickly copy this result here. Here we go. And now that's done, we need to expand each of these two pairs of parentheses. So let's go ahead. x minus 3 in parentheses squared will be equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 where I'm using one of the perfect square identities, which you can see on the screen right now, and I do the same to expand y minus 4 squared. So let's see, that would be y squared minus 8y plus 16, which equals to 34. Next, I gather this plus 9 and this plus 16, and I change the order in which I write these terms on the left-hand side as follows. I'll rewrite this as x squared plus y squared, followed by the x term, so that's minus 6x, followed by the y term, so that's minus 8y, and finally I take care of this 9 plus 16, which leads to plus 25, and that's still equal to 34. Finally, I make sure that nothing is left on the right-hand side, and I do so by subtracting 34 from both sides of this equation. And since 25 minus 34 is equal to negative 9, that leads us to x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 8y minus 9 equals to 0. And that's this circle's equation written in its general form. And there we go. We now know how to find the equation of a circle given its center as well as a point through which it passes. And we've seen how to write that circle's equation in both standard form and in general form. And that's it for this tutorial.